Hi YouTube. Um, it is Saturday afternoon and I am prepping some homeschool stuff for next week and I wanted to just give you a quick overview, um, little kind of show and tell of how we're using this curriculum. Um, I know there have been a lot of questions on the Facebook group that come up and um, I'm hoping that this will maybe be helpful for some of you. We just finished up this unit, which is Intro to Energy. This is from The Good and the Beautiful. If you have never heard of them um, or are not familiar with them, I would highly encourage you to check them out. Um, this is new to us this year and it was actually recommended to me by a viewer, so thank you if that was you. And we have switched over to this for science for this year and my five-year-old is using their pre-K program and she's going to probably be using their language arts program. It just has been working really well for her. And then next year we're gonna incorporate the Good and the Beautiful History Year One um, for both of my big kids. So I'm super excited about this. This is the first time I've been able to share this with you guys. Um, but again, this is the Intro to Energy Unit and I'm gonna show you how I have it set up. Um, and this might be helpful for some of you that are just getting your science curriculum for the first time. When it comes to you in the mail, if you get the physical copy, it's going to come like this. It's gonna be shrink wrapped. Um, this just came today. This is for next year. Um, my kids are super excited about space science, to do space science next year. It's gonna come shrink wrapped and loose leaf like this. If you are familiar with the good and the beautiful, but you haven't ordered science, you know that most of their stuff comes spiral bound. All of the language arts come spiral bound. History comes spiral down, science does not. And when I turn the camera around and show you what's in here, you're gonna see why. Um, this is recommended for grades K through six. In the back, and I'll show you that section in a minute, they have extension activities for seventh and eighth graders. So if you wanna do this with a whole age span of kids, you can. This is meant to be a family style curriculum. So I do this with my kindergartner and with my second grader, and we just kind of do it at each different level. There's not separate things for each for each age group. So you're gonna get your curriculum like this. I'm gonna show you how I put that in my binder. The only other thing that you will potentially want is the read alouds that go with it. And for Intro to Energy, I have six, and I think there was one that I couldn't find. Um, and I will put Amazon links to these down below in the description. So if you wanna see what the actual book is or if you wanna help support us and buy through those links, you can. But I know sometimes it's nice to actually see what the books are. There is one chapter book. This is The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. This has been super interesting. My kids have really liked it. Um, and even though we're done with the Intro to Energy unit, we're not done with the book. So I would not start this, or I would start this at the beginning um, of the whole unit, even though it doesn't come in until like lesson five. Then the rest of these are just read aloud books on energy. And they come in, in in different lessons and we have just split them up that way. So again, I'll Amazon link those below for you if you want to see them. Um, I was just thinking of one other thing and it escaped me. And I'll mention it if I think of it again. Um, but what we're gonna do is turn the camera around so that you can actually see how this curriculum is put together and uh, hopefully that will answer some questions. If you think of other things, leave them in the comments down below and I'll try and address those. My next video is going to be prepping our next science unit, which is the water in our world curriculum. And I'm gonna lay it out just a little bit differently. And so I'm gonna do kind of a whole time lapse so you can see how I set that up from beginning to end. So stay tuned for that one, hopefully in the next couple of days. Okay, can you pause it? Yep. Okay guys, we are back on this side of the table so that you can see a little bit what's in this book. Um, so again, this came loose leaf and I put it all in a binder. This seems to be what a lot of people are doing and it's okay, but honestly, I'm not a huge fan of having stuff in a binder like this because it takes up more room than it has to. So for water in our world, I'm gonna try and do something different. So like I said, I'm gonna try and prep that one next so that you guys can see it. But this is a super easy way to do it. So I wanted to show it to you in case this was helpful for you. And you'll have to forgive my eight month old um, co-host in the, in the background here. So when you open this up, again, this is the one that I bought that was already printed. So everything is gonna come in color. Here is the table of contents. You can see that there are six lessons in this unit. This is one of the smaller units, but they do recommend completing intro to energy before you do the energy unit and then some of the other sciences that are coming out later on. Then you can see the last part is that extension for grade seven through 12 here. 
So I'll show you that when we get it. You're gonna have some unit information, what the little symbols mean. You're gonna have a list of all your supplies that you need. Some of this is available in the um, preview. Some of it is not. So I'll zoom in a little bit on a couple of these just so you can see them. If you wanna have everything, I can't think off the top of my head of anything that I didn't have in this unit when we started. It's super open and go. There's lots of hands-on activities. Um, the books add a nice touch. The mini books that are in here are great, but I didn't have to go and find or buy anything or like make up activities as I went along. There's also a page then that tells you all of your read aloud storybooks. And again, I will link those below as well. So that's kind of your basic beginning information. Then you get into your lessons. You're gonna have vocabulary cards, and I meant to show you this when we were turned the other direction. I'll show it to you at the end, how we've taken care of our word wall um, since we school mostly upstairs in our family room. I'll show you that at the end of the video. So the reason that this doesn't come spiral bound is because there are lots of things that you're going to cut out. So for lesson one, you have this little mini book. So this is gonna be a few of the blank, or a few of the pages in your packet and you're gonna cut them apart and staple them back together. And then you're gonna have, this is nice high quality glossy paper. So you have these really nice pictures in this little mini book that you're gonna read in this unit. So that's an example of one of the reasons why things are not spiral bound. Here's a worksheet that you can make copies of for your kiddos. Um, lesson two, again, here's another worksheet. This is a game that you cut out or like a matching activity. So again, all of these cards are on nice, high quality, glossy paper. I know some people have laminated these. I'm not doing that yet. I did laminate my vocab words, but some of these game pieces I'm not laminating. I'm just keeping them in a page protector for each lesson that they go with. And again, this is kind of the part that drives me nuts is I hate when you have flimsy or off center pages. It just kind of drives me crazy. Um, here's another mini book. Lesson five has some different chart activities and then lesson six has a game. So again, you have the game board in the back and those are pages that you cut apart. So I know people wonder why it's not spiral bound and that's why, because you're gonna cut all of that stuff apart. Here is the extensions for grades seven through 12. So it's gonna give you some more vocab words to work on and then it's gonna give you some extra activities to do for those. There's the non-renewable energy unit, gives you some more information. So this is gonna help you extend if you have kids that are a little bit older, and then obviously there's all your sources at the end. I flip this back closed. So that is why this comes in that loose leaf format. Then you can set it up however you want to that's gonna work best for your family. Again, it's worked super great for us. Um, it really is open and go. I can literally pull it out of the folder when it's time for science, skim it over real quick, and we can do it. And I usually have all of this stuff. I am going to show you really quickly how we set up our word wall. So I'm going to get that set up and then we'll come right back and show that to you. Okay, this is what we're using for our science wall. Um, like I said, we do most of our school upstairs in our family room. We do have a school room downstairs, but I don't want all of our science stuff down there. <laughs> so we have chosen to put some of it upstairs on one of these trifold boards. So this is just one of those boards that you buy from Walmart. It's just a cardboard trifold thing um, and then I've done a couple of different things you can see these over here these three um, these ones over here these are the laminated ones that I actually cut out of the kit and we put those on our wall as we needed them some of these like the potential energy down there in the corner kinetic energy these in the middle which have the wrong heading over them, don't notice that. Um, those I actually printed off out of the PDF so that I could keep my nice cards in my binder where they needed to go, but then we put them up on the word wall and then we uh, put the wrong labels on top of them. So we're gonna switch those around. But then we can pull this out at science time, use it, put it away. If we wanna go back and review energy, we can do that. Um, but this is easier for us instead of just using the whole actual wall then it's not in my dining room all the time. So that's what we've done. 
Um, so again, that's just kind of a recap of the Intro to Energy study by The Good and the Beautiful. I highly recommend it. Um, I've been super happy with it. I'm really excited to get started on water in our world, and we will definitely let you know how that goes. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Happy homeschooling.